And again, um, I mean, the focus for today's session is to look specifically at perusal and how we can use it to help have students collaborate on annotating course readings. So um, what I want to do oh, here, let me also share this out to you. Uh, here's the link to the Google Doc uh, that has the, the notes for um, what I want to cover this afternoon. And um, so let me go ahead and start sharing my screen. And um, I know Faye is a little bit interest, uh, familiar with what uh, social annotation is, but um, I guess I, I'll let you um, I'll let you all uh, watch this YouTube uh, video later. Um, it basically just talks about how um, what essentially we're doing with social annotation is that we're uh, having the ability to display resources online, whether they're like a web page or even like a, um, a PDF of a, a document can be put onto uh, into an online space so that people can view it with their browsers. But that's kind of just a very static approach. What social annotation does is essentially provide a layer on top of the content, the materials that are being presented online. And in that layer, people can um, add annotations and through the social annotation layer on top of the content layer of the web, uh, we can have ongoing conversations back and forth about the material. So even if it's not a site that's been set up to allow, say, for example, commenting, um, because the owner of the content um, is you know, controlling what's what's there with this layer on top. Um, people can have a whole separate conversation and um, we'll talk about how that fits in with um, with what can be going on in class. I just want to make this a little bit clearer in terms of an example using a different tool. Um, those, we, we, I mentioned Hypothesis before we got started. Hypothesis uh, also does social annotation. We do have it in Moodle for now, but I think long-term perusal is probably gonna be a more uh, sustainable um, resource for us. So I could, for example, direct my students to go out and look at this uh, web page from the Planetary Society where it's providing some background information about what do we mean by habitable zone, um, how can we determine whether a planet is in the habitable zone around in another solar system and so forth and what does that mean in, in the search for life and I could direct my students out here to read this um, and each one of my students could take a look at this and maybe make some notes on this page and come back. But with social annotation, um, we again basically wrap this uh, annotation layer around the page and this allows, without us actually marking up the page at the Planetary Society to, as a group, collect notes uh, and make make notes and and even have you know conversations about the material that's on this page and I don't want to get too into the weeds for um, you know the hypothesis tool because we're going to be focused on perusal this afternoon but uh, you know we can um, I can direct my students out here and uh, you know, test Landa uh, could 
say, well, let me flag this bit of text here and say, do we really all love studying worlds? And there could be then the ability to have other students in the class reply to that, to, um, you know, vote different annotations up and down, lots of different tools that allow us to turn the kind of solitary activity of reading course resources into a collaborative uh, activity uh, where the students are working together to make meaning around the, the course resources. So um, just stop sharing for a minute here. I was just wondering uh, at this point if we could have a conversation about ways that you all think about using this kind of functionality in your courses. Yeah. Yeah. Or, uh, this sounds really interesting. I don't know the the actual mechanics of using it, but the way I see it is, you know, I could have students talk about a particular lineation in a poem or you know uh, the, the, the use of an image or a metaphor or a word that's archaic or stanza right. formation or you know something like that so, so i think it's a very good tool for close textual reading which is our top slo in literature yeah right so <laughs> yeah like, you might be having students deal with resources that do have some of these archaic terms and those can quickly throw students as they're reading through and if uh if that term has tripped up one student and they, well, let me go research what this actually means. They can put a little annotation right on the document and say, mm -hmm. this is what we're talking about. And it and it's an explanation of that term actually in a student voice, which might actually be uh, a good way to, uh, to get stu other students uh, engaged with that, um, with that material. Um, yeah, I, I really want to, um so I have a rather mediocre textbook, um, but it's mm -hmm. the one on the subject. So um, I always assign, you know, other more in-depth readings about things as I'm sure most people do. The problem is getting the students to read it. So I think for me, I wanna try to be able to set up, you know, in Zoom, set up breakout rooms and have the students come in with their texts already annotated and break them into small groups to talk about them. Um, and I'll probably, you know, be reducing the amount of lecturing I'm doing and um, scheduling regularly scheduling each week um, discussions about the readings. Yep. So that's what I would like to do. Yeah, so that'd be a good way for the students to be prepared for those breakout sessions. And uh, you'd be able to see the uh, annotating that each of the students did ahead of the session. So you know that they're engaged and working through it. And um, you know, there's no reason why the students couldn't um, pull up the annotations they've already done in Peruse all uh, over the readings to actually have those uh, resources available to them when they're in the breakout room. Um, let me um, just point to you and Shamim, I'll, I'll copy in the, the uh, link to these notes documents again and, and send them around later. Um, here's a, a, a document you, you can refer to later as well. Again, this is from Hypothesis, but um, this just lists some of the different ways. You as the instructor might pre-populate a particularly difficult um, reading with your annotations. So maybe you wanted to define that archaic term, Gara, and then, um, you know, to make sure that the students are all um, understanding it in the same way. You could basically mark up the readings ahead of time with things that you wanted the students to uh, focus on. Um, again, uh, dealing with the vocabulary, you could pre-populate readings with questions. And we can certainly do this with assignments in, in Moodle, so, uh, or other kinds of ways. Here's, here, are the, here are the questions I want you to think about as you're going through the reading. But with the annotation layer, you can actually apply those questions right to the specific text you want the students to think about as they are, are reading through. 
Uh, we've already had a discussion about uh, close reading. Um, maybe some of the other things here is maybe uh, something that we don't necessarily think about. So maybe you are having students deal with some, um, you know, uh, older literary work and you want them to annotate that with more up-to-date multimedia to provide, uh, you know, a different way of engaging with the material. So, you know, this poem by Langston Hughes, uh, is, is, is stirring text on its own, but then to have the students think about, well, what kind of connections can they make and what kind of, of uh, media can they lay over? Because the annotations can be text, but they can, as we'll see, they can be all sorts of, uh, you know, they can be links out to other websites. They can be images. Um, I mean, there's no reason why you couldn't embed a YouTube video in your annotation uh, if it, you know, helps to illuminate the text and so forth. So uh, lots of different ways that, you know, we can think about using um, social annotation in the class. And so what I want to focus on today is um, how to use perusal for this. Um, uh, just to, it won't, won't go into this in, in any depth. You can follow these links when I um, share the document around uh, later uh, to follow up the workshop. But it, this basically was a research project out of Harvard. There were a lot of faculty who were interested in these kinds of topics. Um, they put together a project proposal, an in, in internal Harvard project proposal. They developed uh, this Perusall platform, have kind of spun it off into a quasi-commercial enterprise, although for their business model, uh, it will remain free for faculty and students to use uh, in perpetuity. And they also allow us to kind of in, uh, embed it and incorporate it in our learning management system like, uh, like Moodle here at, at Purchase. So uh, let me just point out this uh, instructor guide section of their help materials. So if you do need to, uh, you know, go back through and get some help in um, working with Perusall, there are resources here. Just realize that you can use Perusall as standalone. We've got it integrated into our LMS. So you wouldn't necessarily go to Perusall to create a course because you'll uh, do that directly from your Moodle course. But in terms of uh, making assignments due, doing um, you know, how Perusall scores uh, student work on their annotations and so forth, um, how do you add different kinds of resources, uh, these might be useful help, mat help materials for you to uh, go back and look to later. Um, so, um, Let's just spend some time getting started. I'll guess I kind of walk through these um, and uh, you know how to add Perusall, how to create a library of resources, so forth. Um, so let me turn editing on. I'm going to be in my one of my sandbox courses. Um, so let me just pull, since we've got a small group here, uh, do you want me to just go through show and tell mainly today? Do you want to take time to actually um, set up these things as we're going through? Uh, I'm, ha I'm happy to set up as we go through. Okay. I mean, I can have two windows open. Yep. So um, let me... Um, Let's first get Perusall added. I'll show you how to add Perusall to your course. And um, I've got editing turned on here in uh, the Sandbox course. If you click Add Activity or Resource, mm -hmm. um, you get to the, the chooser. Um, and we have set up Perusall 
Prusol is set up as an external tool. It uses the LTI integration to combine, to integrate our Moodle system with this third party platform. And so uh, it functions basically as an external tool, but it's uh, one that we really want to highlight. So I've actually set it up to be its own um, tool, uh, its own activity that you can select from the activity chooser. Just like, I mean, if you use VoiceThread, that's also an external tool using that LTI integration, but we've got VoiceThread set up as its own activity that you can choose here. And so if you click, uh, if you select the Peruse All Social Annotation, click Add, and basically all you need to do is to uh, give this perusal activity a name that, because um, this first one is just going to create the, your perusal course space and provide a uh, connection to it. So uh, maybe I would call this, I wouldn't maybe even call it perusal, I would say course uh, document library. Mm -hmm for annotation uh, activities, whatever you want to call it. Um, you can determine whether or not you're going to accept grades from the tool. Uh, the default is yes. For this first connection, I actually don't need to have that selected. Um, and if you unselect this, this overall connection to peruse all, won't show up as an item, as a graded item in your gradebook, which will simplify your gradebook. So that's basically all you need to do. Give it a name, give it, um, uh, determine whether or not you're going to accept grades, click save and return to course. And now I have created in the top section of my course here, a connection between my Moodle course and a newly created uh, course space at Perusall. Uh, so I didn't have to go out to Perusall separately and set up a course. I didn't have to go there and enroll my students. Because of this external tool connection, uh, just adding this activity creates a space for you at Perusall and gives you and your students uh, access to that space and peruse all when you click on this link will know that you're the instructor for that space and when your students click on this link um, peruse all will know that they are um, coming in as students okay. so I'm planning to use uh, peruse all for my uh, search for life in the universe class in the fall so I have already set up this um, this link in the top section of my course, just like I've got the uh, Zoom dashboard set up there, and I've got um, and, you know the connection to the online tutoring uh, service that uh, that uh, Student Affairs has arranged, and you know this is where obviously where I'd put up my syllabus and all the other things that don't relate to a particular you know week of the course. Okay. So, um, I mean, if you are um, working along as, as we're doing this, like Matthew, I mean, that's basically all you need to do to create this first, uh, first connection. Um, so, um, what I want to do is take a little time to uh, show you what your Proves All course space would look like. Mm -hmm and then some of the settings that you can think about um, adjusting. Although in general, most of the default settings are um, pretty, um, pretty useful as they are. So if I click on this um, as a instructor, I'm gonna pop up in a new window and here you will see um, you will see the, uh, the uh, course space at Prusal that was set up for Landa Sandbox 5. 
Now this um, is already, I've already done a lot of stuff in this space for other workshops. So this is not a brand new space, but you, what you would see on this getting started or on this get started tab at your um, cruise all space would be, here's a number of things you might want to think about doing for um, uh, using Prusol. And so because you're creating your Prusol space from within Moodle, this first one would ought to be checked off. Uh, Moodle will not pass to Prusol when your course starts and stops. So uh, it would be good to, Matt, to set up your um, course start and end date to be comparable. Uh, a lot of what you're gonna be doing is adding your course materials to your peruse all space. So if you're gonna use social annotation on materials, you actually don't wanna put them directly into Moodle. You'll wanna put them up here into peruse all and you're gonna to want to then create the, um, the collaborative annotation assignments in, in peruse all and then provide the links to those assignments in your Moodle space rather than just putting the resources in Moodle itself. Um, there is the library where you can organize all the materials that you're going to want the students to work on annotating. And these can be documents that you upload into Perusall. They can also be websites that you link out to. You have the ability to set up assignments and I have um, deleted all the assignments from past workshops so we can talk about how to set them up and you'll have um, you know a listing of your students this won't be populated with all of your students initially but as each student comes through that external tool connection from Moodle to Perusall Perusall will know oh you know Susan is a student of Keith and so let me add Susan to the list of students here so that's, those are the basic, uh, I mean, you're, you're basically probably going to spend much of your time in, the, in your library adding documents and in assignments uh, creating the annotation activities. Um, there are some general settings that you might want to think about um, as you are getting your Peruse All Space set up. Things like the course name and the institution, Moodle will send those directly. You don't, there's no reason really to change those uh, from what your from what Moodle has sent. But here is, you know, where you would set the course start date and end date. And uh, for workshop purposes, I'll just leave these as, you know, March through July, so that we're in the middle of the semester for my sandbox. But if I were going to go into my Search for Life in the Universe course, well, actually, let me go ahead and do that. Uh, I've set this uh, connection up here. If I go to my Search for Life in the Universe course, again, I set this up a while back. Um, um, I could go to course settings and say that my our courses start on August 31st and they end on December 18th or so. Save those changes and now if I go back to the course homepage I'll see I got a little check there. I haven't uploaded any materials yet. I haven't created assignments, but at least I've done that one. Okay. Just a couple of other um, settings pages I want to uh, mention at this point. Um, Access, you really don't need to worry about that because the uh, connection that you've set up in your Moodle course will provide access to all of your students. You don't really need, I mean, the only reason you would maybe use this is if you had a 
collaborator who was not in Moodle, maybe some faculty colleague from somewhere else that you wanted to invite into your perusal space, but you didn't really, there, you weren't going to set them up to be in your Moodle space, you could do that. Um, grouping is something you might want to think about. So I'm going to have 60 plus students in my Search for Life in the Universe course. And if I've got a five page document that I'm going to have them annotate, um, I really don't want 60 students all putting their little post-it notes on the same um, copy of that five page document because the number of annotations would quickly become overwhelming. And so I would put in an enrollment estimate and a target group size. And then um, by default, although you can adjust this manually, um, you can, um, or actually, um, hey, you were talking about having uh, students in breakout groups in Zoom. If you're going to have persistent, say, teams for those kinds of discussions, you might want to manually assign students to groups in Perusall so that when they annotate a document, they not only have their own annotations, but they can see the annotations of other members of their group. And then when they go to the breakout sessions, they're all discussing the, you know, the common set of annotations. Um, the default is, you know, for Perusall to automatically assign students a group so that the annotation the collaboration on the annotation is more manageable. And um, so you can decide you know, what's appropriate for you. So in my course of 60, maybe I want smaller groups of say 10 and I could set that up and Prusall could automatically assign students to these groups as they, as they come in. Scoring, I'll talk about later. And, um, and advanced, uh, we'll maybe come back to advanced. So um, let me um, stop there. Um, those would be the, that would be the process you would use to actually add Prusall to your course. I don't know, Matthew, if you've been uh, doing this on the side as I've been blabbering along or? Yes, I have. Um, okay. Just one quick question. My number one in Perusall, create links in your LMS for students to access Perusall. It does not have a green check in it. Right. So I was, I was noticing that for my course as well. So let me go back into my fall course and click on that little arrow to see, to remind myself, because it's been so long since I have set these connections up. Um, let's see what that arrow leads to. Okay, basically just uh, leads to an article that says this is what's going on and we're already integrated. So there's nothing you as a faculty member have to do to actually do the integration with Moodle. So uh, if I come back here, huh, why is not the green check coming up? Let me just say, yes, this is helpful. No. Oh. That's interesting. I haven't seen that pop up before. Well, let me just say you don't have to worry about step number one because um, this is all taken care of. Actually, um, this may go away when you create an assignment and link that assignment into Perusall. So, because uh, I know I've done that in my workshop space and uh, in my sandbox space for the workshops, and that's probably what made that uh, green check go uh, come up. But for now, you don't have to worry about it. I have a uh, question. Yeah, go ahead, Faye. Um, these groups that you assign, um, when you do that, do, are they assigned forever in these certain groups? Do you um, them up? 
That I'd have to look into because I haven't actually manually assigned groups. Uh, I don't know, you might be able to assign different groups for each assignment that you set up. When we go through the assignment setup, remind me to take a look for that. Um, so, um, Basically, we're talking about adding documents and then uh, creating the annotation assignments. And um, if I, again, open up my, um, go into peruse all, you can see that um, in my course here, uh, it, it says it's created from Moodle. If I go to the library, you can see from past workshops, I've already uploaded a whole variety of stuff. But assume this is a blank canvas. Um, you would have here um, a number of options for adding content. You can create folders for your document library to keep things organized. I tend to be pretty compulsive, although obviously I've been pretty sloppy with workshops here, just uploading things willy nilly. But um, you know, you can add a new folder. Um, you can, there are a number of uh, textbook publishers who have um, made um, arrangements with Perusall to make their, the digital editions of their textbooks available through peruse all courses. And so if you're adopting a textbook in one of, uh, from one of these publishers, you can, um, rather than having the students buy a digital copy you know, elsewhere, um, you can basically adopt that textbook in your peruse all class Students would come in here and then be able to basically um, uh, pay for access to the digital textbook right from within your course. And then you would be able to create annotation activities around that textbook um, material. I haven't used a, a publisher textbook for a long time, but this physical geology PDF that I've uploaded into the course is actually an openly licensed textbook from um, um, the BC Open Project at uh, uh, University of British Columbia. And so uh, I basically have the whole textbook up as a PDF uh, in my course. There are all sorts of um, documents that you can upload into your document library, PDFs of, you know, uh, articles, uh, Word documents you've created, um, you know, whatever functions under fair use guidance, you can, you know, create an accessible PDF scan and put that directly up into your Prusol library. Uh, and also, uh, you can point out to uh, web pages and have them. Um, so basically, to add content, if you just click on the add button here, you see all of those options. And I see that they've added some new ones. So uh, I could create a new folder and um, call it uh, yet another workshop. And click OK. And now I've got that folder. If I go into that folder, I could um, add a document from my computer. And this is always dangerous, but let's see what's uh, uh, maybe something that's not quite so large. And uh, Perusall will uh, uh, not only upload that document to your course space at Perusall, but it will also process that document and look for natural breaks within that document because you can assign not only whole documents, but individual pieces of documents uh, for your um, for your uh, assignments. Um, 
for your annotation assignments, as we'll see in a little bit. So while that's chugging along, let me go out here and um, Mars, uh, Gullies, Wikipedia. What about hard copies, uh, Keith? Hard you, copy copies. You would have to scan the material, and you'd want to make sure that you were sc scanning that in, a, in an accessible format. And then um, you would have a PDF of it. And then you could upload that PDF just the same way that I uploaded the PDF of that um, um, guidelines document that, uh, that I just uploaded. And here you can see that it's all, um, all been processed. It's been uploaded into my document library at Perusall and has been tagged up in terms of you know sections of content. Hey, I, want, I, have, I, want. I have a quick question. Yeah. Um, so you said as long as it's accessible. Um, so I have a lot of older scans, and I it was before I learned how to make them right. accessible. Does that mean Perusall won't accept? No, Perusall will accept them. I'm just. I'm just trying oh, okay. to be a good citizen and, okay, good, and just good, good. Re reinforce the point. <laughs> I could because I can't rescan these now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, you know, um, in terms of reme remediating old documents, again, y y we all have a limited amount of time to, to focus on that. And so you want to just, you know, deal with maybe the most egregious ones and say for the other ones, well, they are, they're as good as they can be for right now. Rebecca Olin will help with that. Yes, yeah, Rebecca is great for that. So um, maybe I also want students to annotate this uh, Wikipedia page on Gullies on Mars. Uh, you know, it's a lot of different materials here, different sections. And so I can just take the uh, URL and click Add. And I'm going to add to a uh, web page. Just put in the URL, and again, this will show up as a resource that um, is. Uh, once it's been processed, it will it will show up as a, a document as a resource in the library that I could build assignments around. But Keith, I'm sorry to keep interrupting, but no, that's I, I, okay. I need to ask a general question. Yeah. So all this content that we're adding into our library, this is all going to be keyed to the assignments, correct? So you, yeah. don't, have to, you don't have to take those resources and add them into each assignment. It's going right. to link, right? So we'll look at that process next, Faye, but as soon as you've got the materials in your, in your document library and peruse all, you can build annotation activities around those. And then um, I just wanted to, what I'll do is uh, just show you the other kinds of uh, activities. And I'm kind of interested that they've added video. Um, so I haven't had a chance to play around with that. And you notice that um, I must not have had this folder selected when I added this um, Wikipedia page. And I really wanted it to be in this workshop folder. So you can grab this little icon in front of the resource. And I can drag and drop it into the folder. So and maybe I want to bring this, um, this web document down into the folder as well. So you can uh, you can not only create folders, but you can upload things, you can rearrange things into the folders. Um, can you we, add yeah, go ahead. Can you add PowerPoint presentations? Uh, what I would do is I would export that PowerPoint presentation as a PDF, which is straightforward to do, right? And then it's just uploading another PDF document. Okay. You, you could it uh, it talks about um, I mean if you go to um, the add content here, it says select a PDF, EPUB, or Word document. Well, it doesn't say PowerPoint in specifically, but it does say Word document. So I mean you could try uploading a, a, a PowerPoint and see if um, Perusall will ingest it. 
But if not, you know, it's easy enough to say that uh, PDF, uh, that PowerPoint is a PDF. And that's Thank, certainly. Thanks. That's really helpful. Yeah. yeah. Um, you, know, say, you know, say I want to use the total book, you know, like say, you know, something about uh, Frederick, Frederick Douglass, I mean, a total text. And I don't want to uh, just scan parts of it. How do we go about doing that? Uh, you were breaking up, Shamim. I didn't hear you all. I didn't hear all of what you said. Hang on. Let me see. Am I? Uh, you I can I can hear you now. What 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 were you asking about? My question is, you know, say I want to use a total text, and I don't want to scan parts of it. How do I? Well. <sighs> If you've got, well, I mean, you're talking about a whole textbook. Yeah. Um, it's going to have to be in digital format for you to do social annotation exercises around it. So it has to be available in a digital format. Uh, and if it's not, I mean, you would have to scan it. And then you, we run into the issue of, well, you really can't scan a whole textbook and make it available to your students if it is copyrighted material. If it's not openly licensed, you really can't scan the whole textbook and put it up into Moodle or into Perusal for that matter. If it is a commercial textbook that publishers have made available through their arrangement with perusal you could use it then but uh, again students would have to pay for the access just like they would with any other textbook you were having them um, purchase from a commercial publisher hmm. and what's the other term that you used social what i mean on the digital materials use it into the social format well, we're talking about social annotation. So, you know, if, if you want your students to collaborate on marking up the text, it has to be in a digital format. Um, so just to, I won't, I won't add a, a commercial textbook to my sandbox course here, but if you were interested in that option, you would click add textbook. And then you would be able to just search all of these different publishers who have um, made arrangements with Perusal and, um, you know, find your discipline or just search the title directly or, you know, search the author. And, uh, you know, you click on it, you request the title, and then um, the publisher would arrange with the Perusal um, site to have that available to your course and create the link for your students to uh, to purchase the access to the digital copy. Okay. So, I mean, th there's just lots of different ways to get the content up into um, your library. Um, I'm mindful of, your, of, of everyone's time. So let me just uh, show you what it's like then to create assignments. And uh, and we'll make sure that um, we go through that and um, may or may not go into grading or, or, or how the grading works in detail or how those grades come back to Moodle. Uh, we can always follow up with that. So you can, from your library, select a... Um, a resource and create an assignment around that resource mm -hmm. or you can go to the assignments tab and click add assignment and create the assignment you know referring back to uh, a document in your library so maybe I'll do it both ways let me start off with this uh, this um, PDF and I can create an assignment. And here's the content that is going to be assigned. Um, I can, I didn't even, well, how many pages is this? This is a five page document. So I can either um, assign all of the content in that five pages, or maybe I just really want uh, students to focus on the first three pages of the document. 
so basically you you um, tell Prus all what is the content that I want the students to to annotate and then you can go to the next step um, you know when is it going to be due well let's say it's due on the 17th give it a name a uh, workshop annotation assignment example and here you can give whatever detailed instructions you want uh, for your students if you have pre-populated the document with uh, annotations yourself you can tell your students you know look for my um, annotations in the document and respond to those questions or if you're getting them to do a close reading you would give them you know whatever whatever directions you would give them to annotate or mark up the document for your close reading uh, activities you would just put that in here you know you say I, I want you to do at least you know five annotations spread out across the document and for one of the annotations I want you to provide a link to an external resource that helps to illuminate the document for another annotation I want you to look at the text that is um, is uh, there and you know do whatever whatever kind of instructions you want uh, click on next steps um, I just said I want them to do five annotations so let me put that in and um, you can uh, set when the students can start working on it and um, also you have the ability um, to rather than have the whole class annotate a particular document maybe this is a document for one particular group of students in your class to annotate you can you know select which students are you want um, to do the annotation and if i do uh, all that click save changes i have now created an annotation assignment this is the the document that is being annotated um, I can um, get a report as to who's done what I can look at all the comments that all the students have created on that uh, the one thing I want to point out here though is I can copy the full title of this annotation activity to the clipboard and now if I go over and let me actually close out from perusal and now if I go into Moodle I can add another activity and let me put it down here let's say we're now in week one of the class I can add another perusal activity but in this case instead of giving it just some generic activity name I can paste in the exact title of the assignment in my perusal class. In this case, I do want to accept grades from the tool because this is a graded activity in perusal and I want perusal to be able to, to transfer those grades back to Moodle. And if I click save and return to course, now I have not only the um, the generic link that my students can use to get to the document library, but there's also this specific link to the assignment. And so if I go over to um, you know a browser where I'm in here as a student, what the student will see is okay. Well, here's the link to um, the overall library. And when I click on that, um, I will see the course space, but from the student's perspective. And so the student has, you know, um, a notifications tab. It's got uh, the student has a, a link to their scores. Their getting started page basically has a welcome message and you can actually set what this welcome message is the 
uh, if you go into course settings for your um, view of your course, one of the options is to be able to edit and update this welcome message so they, that you can get, provide a custom uh, welcome message for students coming into your course. They would see the library and they would see assignments and there aren't any assignments available right now because of what I did setting up that assignment. Um, so let me go back in here and um, uh, go into that peruse all assignment and edit the settings. And take off, or let's, let's just make it earlier, save those changes so this assignment is now open. If I um, come back in here and uh, click on this link to the specific assignment, As a student, instead of just going into the generic uh, course space, I am taken right into the document that needs to be annotated. And um, I would be able to you know, select material here and add a annotation. Here's my comments. Again, as I talked about, you can link out to external websites, you can insert videos, you can put images in, you can do all sorts of basic, you know, formatting of your uh, comment. And um, by just uh, click uh, enter, uh, I've got that uh, comment that I've added to the current conversation. I could select a different bit of text and put in a different comment. And, um, ooh, uh, I selected too much text. But anyway, um, now I have, uh, I have added a couple of comments to the document here. Other students in my group would be able to see my annotations and my instructor would also be able to see all of the annotations that are on. Um, there are, um, uh, you as a student, I could, you know, star particular comments. I could um, look through the document. If it's an extended document, I've got access to a thumbnail view and so forth. I can bookmark different parts of the document. Uh, I can make notes, which are separate from annotations. And there are accessibility tools like, you know, being able to read the document aloud. Okay. And um, the assignment is for me to do five annotations. I should be able to track my progress here and see that uh, I've got two conversations. I've started two conversations and I have posted zero follow-up answers or comments. Zero people have responded to or, or upvoted my annotations. And my annotations are so crappy, I actually don't expect many people to upvote them. Okay. So, so Keith, just to be clear, this, this assignment appears in, say, week five or whatever week you've assigned. Yep, wherever you put Very it brutal. in. Whenever, when they get to Moodle and they're in their week, they're going to see it appear there. Yep. And that's because you've, you've, you've added the first perusal activity, which just sets up your, doc, your course and, and the document library. And then when you set up an assignment, uh, you can copy the full title of the assignment in perusal and use that to set up a, a, another perusal activity in your Moodle course with that exact title. And when students click on it, Perusall will know to take them straight into that assignment rather than just dumping them into the Perusall course space. And then they have to go look for the assignment. Okay, so um, let me um, let me just show you another feature about adding an assignment. Here I'm starting from the uh, assignment tab. So I have to select the um, the resource, the document 
uh, in the library that I want the students to work on. And so I'm going to actually select that, uh, the PDF of my physical geology textbook. And uh, when I uploaded that, Perusall went through and identified all of the different chapters and sections within the chapter. And so um, rather than just say, here's the textbook, I want you to annotate it for this assignment. I could say, um, you know, do the chapter on minerals. That's, well, that's 34 pages. That's maybe too much. So uh, let me really have you focus on, I really want you to spend your time annotating these 12 pages that are uh, that talk about the mineral groups and and the silicate minerals in particular and then you just go to the next step just like you you know did before uh, mineral groups annotation assignment give it a name you put in whatever uh, instructions you want go to the next step. Um, you can just use the default, you know, you got 12 pages there. I want you to do seven annotations somewhere over those 12 pages. And uh, click Save Changes. Again, I would be able to copy that full title. Go over to Moodle and say, okay, well, you know, down here in week whatever, um, I want you to do this annotation activity. So you just put in the copy in the full title. Accept grades from tool is already selected and maybe I don't want that to be 100 points. I want that to be 10 points. And I click save and return to course. It now shows up as a um, as an activity here in week eight. That students can click on. If I go, if I went into the grade book, it would show up as a grade book item that was worth 10 points. Um, given the time, I'm not going to take the time to go through all of the, you know, passing grades back and forth between Perusall and Moodle, but I just do want to say that under settings, there is this uh, scoring tab for settings. And um, Perusall, I'll, you can override, the, override this, but Perusall uses uh, an artificial intelligence, an AI engine, to take a look at the annotations that students are doing and basically will um, break them into different categories of utility. Basically, meaning ones that really don't contribute anything, ones that are insightful, and ones that are in between, and provides relative point values um, for those. So you could say that, well, for a really insightful annotation, I want that scored as a five, and for so-so annotations, I want those scored as a four, and annotations that have really no meaningful content, I want those to be a zero. So you either get 100 points, 100% 100 or an 80% or zero. Um, and uh, you know, here's the default annotations to grade. If you are having um, perusal uh, grade the annotations through the, you know, the AI uh, functionality. Your option is just to grade the annotations by themselves, which is um, what the default is. And Perusall would basically look at the annotations that each of my 60 students have done and say, well, did, did Susan do seven of them? For those seven, you know, how many were high quality, how many were um, adequate, and how many were, had, had basically um, no meaningful content, and would provide kind of a score for Susan that would go into the grade book for Susan. Same thing for the other 59 students in my class. Um, so, 
you can obviously always override that. You can uh, control whether those grades actually get passed back to the Moodle gradebook, or maybe you use the the grades that peruse all assigns to the student annotations as your first cut at grading the students, but then you determine what final grades that you're going to put into the Moodle gradebook. Um, I plan to make use of this because, you know, if I've got 60 students doing lots of annotations on lots of articles, it's just going to not be able to manage, be manageable for me to individually necessarily provide a, a grade for each of those annotations. So that's, uh, that's kind of the default. They actually recommend a more holistic approach. And if you select that, then the amount of the scoring that perusal will do is uh, decreased from 100%. And other things like um, um, how well the students for example, you don't necessarily want the students to say, okay, I, I need to do seven annotations. I'm going to look at the first paragraph. I'm, I'm going to put seven annotations on the first paragraph. I'm going to be done. So how well do, does the student contribute annotations across the whole document? Uh, how much time is the student spending on um, reading through the document and working with the document? Uh, how much are student annotations being responded to and upvoted by their colleagues? Uh, all of these can be factors that go into the score that student uh, that Prusal will provide for a particular student, and that would go into the Prusal gradebook. And then, of course, you can override that and determine what grades you actually want to put into Moodle for the students. Um, based on how they've done on that assignment. So it's a little rushed there at the end. Uh, we're already kind of over time, but um, basically it's uh, a straightforward to add this connection between Moodle and Perusal. You add the activity once. You it, That automatically creates your Perusal class and creates the connection between your Moodle course and Perusal. You can add all sorts of documents, organize them however you want. And then, um, you know, you either select a piece of a document from your library and create an assignment around it, or you create an assignment and point it at a particular piece of uh, uh, document. It's really equivalent. And then, um, give your students clear directions as to what you want them to accomplish when they're annotating the document. Rely to what extent you want on um, the first cut of grading, but I think we really want to, um, you know, have good control over um, what grades we're getting shipped back. And actually, there is a setting for that. Here under advanced settings for your course space, you can automatically sync grades back to the to Moodle, which I wouldn't necessarily recommend. You can manually sync the grades back or you can decide not to sync the grades back to Moodle, in which case uh, you would see the grades in the peruse all grade book and then you could add the grades in. Or if you manually sync the grades back, then um, the grades are in the um, Peruse All Gradebook. And uh, you can override those. You can, you can tweak those grades. And then once you have tweaked the grades, then you could click the Release the Grades to Students. And the students would see the grades in Peruse All. And those would then be also synced back to the gradebook in Moodle. So with that, I think I will stop sharing um, and see if there are any f any final comments. I think you're you're you want to use Prusal. You you should go into your fall course, add that first Prusal activity to get your Prusal course space set up. 
you could even well your your students aren't 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 able to access your fall courses until the fall anyway but if you wanted to you could set up that that link you could hide it initially from your students so that you can go in and use it get your course space at peruse all set up with the settings that you want start start adding your documents organize your documents decide what what do you want students to do when they are collaborating to annotate you know this document what do i want them to do when they're annotating this document decide what your annotation goals are for each of the documents set those up as assignments and then copy the assignment name from perusal into new activity perusal activities in moodle so that stu students have direct links from moodle to the annotation assignments that you've set up in perusal so is the thing for perusal going to be set up in our names or in our courses now we can start working so shamim you would you would add that perusal activity first that does all the work in terms of setting up your peruse all course so if a, if a faculty member is not going to use peruse all there's no corresponding peruse all course set up to to match up with the moodle course but as soon as a faculty member adds the first peruse all activity to their course that triggers the creation of a course space a corresponding course space at peruse all Another question I have is, sorry, um, do we need to have our own PDF uh, software in our computers set up? Because I can read documents, PDF documents on my computer, but I can't, you know, move, it, move much of it around. No, I mean, you, you can take pre-existing PDFs, say you've downloaded them from some site or, um, you know, wherever you wherever you've gotten the PDFs that you're looking at on your computer, uh, you could you can then upload those as documents into your Perusal course space. You don't have to you don't have to have created them. Yeah, because I can read uh, PDF documents on my computer, but like if I have to sign in something or write something into PDF, I can't do it. Yeah, you don't have to be able to edit PDFs in order to be able to upload them into Perusal. Okay. But in case if we want to edit or write or something, then we need to have our own software. Right. Yep. That's very expensive. Um, well, uh, Acrobat uh, is part of the Adobe suite, and so you should you should contact um, CTS and say, um, I would like to have a copy of Acrobat Pro uh, so that I can so that I can uh, take all of these old scans that I have and spend a little bit of time remediating them. If you're gonna remediate uh, any of your old scans that aren't accessible, you're gonna need Acrobat Pro. Uh, if you want to create your own documents, you're gonna to have to add have Acrobat Pro. If you are just, say, working in Word or in um, PowerPoint, and you want to save your Office document as a PDF, you, that's built into the office platform itself you don't have to have acrobat pro to be able to do that so you could you could create a uh, you could create your powerpoint and from powerpoint save it as a pdf and then you'd have the pdf that would be um that you could upload into perusal okay and what's the connection between acrobat and adobe acrobat is the adobe product for working on pdfs <clears throat> thank you Keith it's super helpful I appreciate yeah, it thank Great. you so much for your time you're a good yeah. so uh, I will stop the recording